You're listening to the Three Nerds in a Basement podcast. This is the Geek Sheet Culture Show where we talk about all the cool things in the world. I'm your host, Vince. And I'm Blavin. Anthony. And today we're doing a comic review. We are. It's as simple as that. Yep. It's the new summer event for Marvel. It is. Infinity. Infinity, yes. Yeah, so that's the big review this week. We also got news on... New magic cards. And video games. Yep. I believe. That's really it. Yep, that's it. So, let's get started. Marvel's Infinity. As Blavin alluded to earlier, this is the big summer fall event for the Marvel Universe. Mm Mm-hmm. And it is, um... It is about the big baddie Thanos. Yeah, it's his triumphant return. Yeah. Again. (laughs) Again. And he's trying to look for something, and you're not really sure what it is. And it's been revealed that the person, spoilers... Who knows most about it, or has it in his possession? It's Black Bolt. Yes. Of the Inhumans. The king. The king himself. Yes. So, yeah. The biggest thing that I found about this was that I mean, none of the Avengers now. Yeah, they're different. Right? right? Yeah. Oh my god. No. Uh, uh, after the Age of Ultron thing, yeah, things got shaken up. Yeah. Didn't know any of these people at yeah. all. Yeah. There's a lot of new names, a lot of new faces. Iron Man looks totally different. That's his God Killer armor. Really? Yep. That's the God Killer armor. What? I like it. It, I I didn't say I didn't like it. I just said it looked different. Uh, Yeah, it does. Uh, Yeah, and Captain America's got more of like armor plating going on too. Yeah. So the premise of this is that you see Thanos all over the world, or all over the universe actually, collecting tribute from different planets that he's conquered Mm -hmm. and then there is a mass of i think they're called the builders yes i don't know are they related to thanos in your i don't i don't really No, they're just like another section of the marvel universe okay and they're invading they're resetting universes i guess yes and so they're they're coming straight for they basically control everything right and they're coming straight for earth yes while thanos while well, the Avengers were dispatched to deal with the builders, what happens next? Well, Thanos attacks the defenseless Earth. Or that's what you're assumed to believe. That's what they're jettisoning to do. Right. So the fact that he's apparently he's searching for something on Earth that Black Bolt has, you don't really know what it is. Mm-hmm. Really interests me to see what 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 it could be or what his main goal is, mm-hmm. and who's gonna defend. The I, Earth. Well, it's, it's Iron Man, obviously. Just Iron Man by himself <laughs> and then the Marvel Knights, you know, Luke Cage. No, 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 just it. Iron Man. Just by himself. Yeah, he'll pull the whole Iron Man 3 movie thing. He'll call it on his, all his armors. Oh, my God. Is that really what's going to go down? No, I don't know. Probably not. I'm not going to go there. But, uh, yeah. yeah, strangely enough, uh, a lot of the big people in the Avengers roster are missing. I didn't see... Is Hank Pym still in the Avengers? Uh, no. No? I don't think so. The Hawkeye is now the movie Hawkeye. Or does he always look like that? He's always looked like that. Like, it's the... slowly... Uh, we've talked about this before. Slowly, the comic book things have started to shift their 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 costumes to look more like the movie people for kids who are getting in with the movies. Right. What about uh, the Hulk? I didn't see the Hulk, did I? You didn't see the Hulk, but you did see Bruce Banner. Ah, that's what it was. Yes, he's not in Hulk form. He's just always in Bruce Banner form now. Say what? Yes. Oh, my God. I uh, saw Thor. Yeah. Uh, the Falcon, which is, come on, out of all the people to keep there. Yeah, I don't know why he, he's there. <laughs> he's just the dude who can fly, right? Yeah. Good for him. Uh, who else is missing from the Avengers? I didn't see the Black Widow and said we have somebody else. With no, she's hair. there. She's there. Is she there? She's oh, there. She was? She's there? Mm-hmm. All I remember is that another girl took the center stage, the girl with green hair. Y- yeah, yeah, you're right. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I don't know. Who she sword? Is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who she is either. And... Yeah, the in, the big thing I was really excited about is that they introduced the Inhumans, who are based, yes. who usually with the Fantastic Four lore, mm-hmm. because they have the most interaction with, well, from my experience, they yeah. have the most interaction with them. And the human humans are, were they humans that got turned into those? or with, I can't remember, but they gained their powers to exposure to this phenomenon, I guess, or maybe it's man-made, I don't know. It was a, it, yeah, it was, a, it was a man-made experiment yeah, that the ter- they volunteered for. Yeah, so they released their... Latin potential, and of course, Black Bolt got the bestest. Yeah. Super voice. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, the Inhumans, they all live in a floating castle type thing. Yeah. New York. So, I guess they're their own 
They're not really a race, are they? I would say. I wouldn't, you wouldn't call them a race. They're, they're their clan. own group. Yeah. yeah. And Black Bolt has like five wives. He's the king. He's yeah. allowed to. He Apparently it's regular lore when they said that he loves one and hates one. Yeah. I didn't realize that that was a thing. I thought it was yeah. just for this comic. And but no, that's that's one of his... Yeah, he things. loves one, despises one, and just doesn't care for the rest. The rest, yeah. yeah. It was all just to unite the clans all in one. Yeah. And uh, you meet Lockjaw, the dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, Very for funny. like a second. For like a second. And you get to see a little bit of Black Bolt's power. Mm. Super whispers. Mm-hmm. Where he whispers at you and his voice is enough to destroy you. Yeah. So... Yeah, overall, I'm really excited about this comic, actually. It looks like a promising... It's not... It's confusing because of the new characters, but the premise is not confusing. Yeah. I'm gonna attack Earth, defend yeah, it. Exactly. And it, because, because it's a big event, yeah. crazy shit will go down. Yeah, of course. There's gonna be some death, there's gonna be some fights. Yeah. There's gonna be some conflict. Mm-hmm. So issue one of six, do you know what the schedule is like? I think it's monthly. Monthly? So yeah. it'll be done end of this year? Yeah, it, it should be done, and then... That takes for a whole new... It sets up 2014, basically. Like, what it's going to be Marvel. Is there going to be another, like, reset, you reckon? I don't think it's a reset, but it, it, it'll... You know how, like, they're trying always continuously... Trying to get... Uh, new clean, people. Yeah, clean starting points for new audiences. Right. That's what they're moving towards. Interesting. They're just, they're just trying to create great on jumping points. Okay, okay. Yeah. But, yeah, overall, I actually enjoyed this comic. It's a bit thicker than other first issues or is this always the same for events i never know because i never buy single issues and this is the first one i've bought in no no the, you know i don't buy comics at all either but when i but about this one i was like wow this is chunky like i thought it was a, it's thick a lot book. bigger than all the suicide squad volumes so. yeah like they really it, it mind you it also was like the most expensive single comic i've bought in a while how yeah. much it's five bucks how much are they usually like three yeah three bucks yeah three so, but it is part of an, a major event. So, I expected it to be a little, have a little more content. Mm-hmm. So, usually the issues in bigger events are quite, are longer than usual. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Look for, looking forward to it. What do you guys think? Uh, Anthony, what do you think about Infinity? There's just, there's too much new stuff for me. Like, there's too many people that I don't know about. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like Blavin said, it is... It is a pretty simple story to follow, uh-huh. but like none of that crazy stuff seems to have happened. It, this issue was all planning, and it was all learning yep. about the threat and stuff like that. So it's all set up. Yep, that kind of just set up story combined with there's a lot of characters I don't know mm-hmm. or slash care about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of I, th- I kind of thought it was just okay. Yep, I'm kind. I want to. I want to see. What will happen because the power they showed off of these mm-hmm. universe destroyers yeah. are pretty ridiculous. Like yes. they literally reset a gal- like a, a planet. Yeah. Uh but yeah, other than that, I can say this comic was kind of whatever for me. Mm-hmm, like I, I like I was wondering why does Tony Stark look so weird? Mm-hmm. And then you mentioned it was the god killer armor. Yeah. And like there's just there's just so much stuff that at at a glance, it's like these aren't the people I know, mm-hmm. and also the people I know are kind of weird in ways yeah. that I, I don't know why. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was a lot of it was a lot of being lost for me. Mm-hmm. Yo, welcome to comics. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to comics. No, seriously, this is what happens every year. Yeah. Dude, so much happens, and if you're not up to date, then you're not up to date. Mm-hmm. Kind of sucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, it was okay. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure the I'm sure the more galactic events that yeah. will come later will be. Mm-hmm. something to witness or something to read I'm, I'm positive it probably will be yeah even if it's disappointing I think <laughs> it'll be worth carrying through I'm waiting for just Black Bolt to scream and then he like sacrifices yeah. himself along mm-hmm. with something else mm-hmm. what did you think Vince? Uh, yeah no I'm, I'm with Anthony so, like, I was confused at first I was like who are, who are these people? what's going on? but then you know what it's um I realize that I shouldn't really be focusing on all the characters because in the panels, like they have, there's enough exposition to get the plot down. Right. And the only the only time you ever need to know about a character is when it's focused on them. Mm-hmm. And even then, if you don't know about something, it's because the author doesn't want you to know about them yet. Like right. for example, um, uh, is it Mister Universe? Mr. Universe, yeah. Yeah, so like you don't really Captain know... Captain Universe. Captain Universe, you don't really know, like, so it feels very shady around this character. Right. But I don't feel like that was at all 
detrimental. Like not knowing about that character's background, I don't think was was an issue for me. It was just like, right. oh, that's just you know part of the story. It's kind of like I'm sure their importance will arise later on throughout the series, and I'll be okay with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm I'm super excited. I I like how it's like a giant universe event. It's a <laughs> and it involves everybody. That's true. Like it. I feel like this is one of the the biggest events in a while, mm-hmm. and uh, and almost everybody is there. Everybody important at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I, I like it. And speaking about characters, like you not you don't you don't recognize them anymore. Yeah, I kind of like that because every year superheroes don't change. Tony right. Stark is still Iron Man. Captain yeah. America is still Steve Rogers. And mm-hmm. at some point, I do want them. I want superheroes to to evolve and change. Mm-hmm. I want them to be different. And this kind of reminds me of that. It's like, huh. You know what, though? I mean, when I first jumped back into comics a couple of years ago, when I did want to keep up with everything, I read one event and I didn't know what the heck was going on, even when it was the same characters who yeah, I knew. Yeah, yeah. But when I went back and reread like past storylines that mm-hmm. led up to it, mm-hmm. it made more sense. But again, it was still a time commitment. Yeah, but it was yeah. very fulfilling. Yeah. Because after I read all the past issues and then went back to read the event, event again, like reread the event, mm-hmm. all the culmination of the event made more to me. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess, yeah. I, I always tell people to start in the the new, the major events because you're right, it is a good starting off point because once you read it, maybe it'll, maybe you'll be interested enough to look at the back stuff, like before stuff. Yeah, yeah, or generally there's, there'll be something in the event that you'll latch to and you'll want to learn more about. Yeah, learn and, about that path. And the big thing was that I only read select teams and whatnot, but... For example, they talk about something and say, oh, this was referenced in the, la- the issue of this other magazine. Mm-hmm. So you end up learning about things just sort of on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. So you don't really need to keep up with everything. Yeah, You learn enough by just keeping up with one. Uh-huh. It seems like this uh, this event also allows you to, if you are curious, to check out other things. Because yeah. on, the, on the back of it, there's like a release roadmap yeah i really like that timeline guide yeah, yeah. and That's it's like if, if you want to know like if you want to know extra about this thing yeah and you want to delve deeper it's like get these issues which release on these days yeah and it was it was also really useful yeah the other thing i like yeah said it, uh, about the comic was like you mentioned when they wanted you to know about people they let you know uh-huh. which was cool because it's like at the beginning when they have that page of like, the list of teams and who's oh in it, yeah, yeah 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 i was like who the hell are the Illuminati? Like, I know the yeah. people in the Illuminati, yeah. but what is the Illuminati? And then mm-hmm. they, they want you to know about it, so they tell you they're people who all yeah. hold one of the Infinity Gems and stuff like yes. that. So, yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I, I liked how, like mm-hmm. you mentioned, when they want you to know, then you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, uh, that that thing at the beginning that shows you all the characters in every team, it's like a double-edged sword, right? Because the thing is, you see it and you get excited, but then you focus so much on it, you're like, well, who are these guys, right? It's kind of information overload for and, me. And, and, and to be honest, you don't really need that. It's kind of just there as a helpful tool to remember mm-hmm. where people are placed, but you don't need to look into that. Um, and speaking of just, maybe it's because I haven't bought a comic in a while, but I really like the structure of how, how comics are today. Like, all the ads are marvel specific ads mm-hmm. like i don't know if you guys saw that the tony stark ad was a was an audi and he's just driving it yeah i saw that the i think the last ad is um it's black widow and she's doing a kick, kick yeah or something yeah i can't remember it's a dr pepper yeah. yeah and it's like i really like that's i like that um <laughs> I, I don't know why i just i i feel like it makes it feel like the world's more real and believable right um the cool thing too is even though i said this was an expensive comic it also includes the digital version mm-hmm. <laughs> And so I read my, my, like, I bought the comic, I looked through it on in the car, but when I got home, I just read it off my iPhone. Oh, okay. That's hilarious. So it's pretty cool. They also have this other feature where, uh, I, I know there's a there's an iOS and an Android app where in the corner it says, like, AR, and if you use the app, it'll do, like, extra info on things. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't try it out, but apparently it's a cool, useful tip for, for losers. Yeah. Chock full of goodies? Yeah, I don't know. So, but yeah, no, it, it was fun. When I saw that it came with the digital copy, it kind of reminded me of like when bands now they put out music on vinyl, like to, oh, to entice right. you to pay that extra for mm-hmm. the for like the vinyl, they put the digital copy on there for free. Yeah, yeah. So I I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. It's like they're trying to 
mix both worlds and see which one you like better. Yeah, no, I was surprised they included it too, like, because day and date digital comic releases are not very common. And, yeah. And I'm surprised they're pushing it with this, and if this is how, like, comics are going to continue, that's that's exciting. Hmm. Um, I remember when I finished the book, I was like, where the hell's Spider-Man? I'm like, oh, hmm. right, Spider-Man's dead. <laughs> it's like Doc Ock now or something? Yeah, there was a Freaky Friday scenario. <laughs> Uh, Lindsay Lohan was involved Doc, Doc Hawk was about to die but Spidey's like what's up and he switched bodies so he, Peter Parker died that confused me I was at the comic book shop recently and oh, I'm you, like you saw Superior, yeah. Superior Spider-Man I was like what is this Spider-Man and why is he crazy evil yeah. whoa yeah yeah it's, it's interesting but the twist was like he also retains Peter's memories yeah mm -hmm. so he uh, he wants to be the Peter, better Spider-Man Spider yeah. so he's ultimately good now also, yeah. then the issue I read is, like, the Punisher was on his back. Yeah. So it's like, if he fucking slips, it's over. Yeah, so... But you know what it's gonna be. It's gonna be like a Tony Stark scenario. Peter probably uploaded his fucking brain, brain. To, the, to the cloud. To the spider net. Yeah, something like that. To the web? Yeah, oh god. <laughs> to the web? Oh god. So, the uh, small tangent, a little thing is, um, in the current events for the Ultimates universe, yeah. uh, I believe the Ultimate... That universe might actually come to an end. Oh, wow. And they're thinking that Miles Morales might make the jump to the 616 universe, so this universe. Hilarious. And he, and the rumors are he might take the role of the new Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, okay. And it might just x nay Peter forever. Wait, Miles Morales is the black kid, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, there goes Peter Parker. What a legacy. Yeah, so. That would be, that would be interesting if, like, Peter Parker was done. And. Yeah, I don't think so. And we had, yeah, I know, and we had. Miles and Doc Ock Spidey just going around New York. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> That'd be some effed up shit. <laughs> <laughs> just like good old buddy cop movie. Yeah. Once was a villain, now reformed. No, but think about it, because they're going to try to outdo each other. And be like, I'm going to be the better Peter. No, I am. That's like saying somebody else is going to be, another Kryptonian is going to be the Superman. Superman's dead. Clark's yeah. dead. Clark's gone. Yeah. That would be really strange. I, I, th like, I have no doubt Peter will be back, but could you imagine it's a 10 year run that Peter's gone? Yeah, I could imagine that. Because they make it an event for the year. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god, Peter's back! And then you could reintroduce all these kids to Peter Parker. Yeah. But there you go. Uh, so, sorry. Infinity. Would you guys uh, rate it? The first issue? Yeah. It's, I know it's, a, it's only one issue, but it's a... Uh, did it excite you? Does it make you want to continue? Are you going to wait for the trade? I'll give it a three, and I'm going to wait for the trade. Yeah. As I usually do. Yeah? Okay. I'm going to give it a three, and it's going to... Like, I'm probably going to read more because it's space yeah space usually yeah. means oh, oh. shit told so, you guys this already none of you guys ever want to go into cosmic i want to read nova but i mean i need to know i said annihilation i know but i but then i'd have to know too much more else around it yeah but if, you know what i think that i think the cosmic stuff is way better than the earth stuff a lot of people like uh, just I, fyi i, I yeah. want to read fear itself yeah is that cosmic or no 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 that's uh that's earth stuff that's earth stuff but no that's a good that's a good one okay yeah what I want to, uh, I, yeah, I'll news. I'll make it three for three. I'll, yeah. I'm giving it a three, yeah. and my continuation will depend on the covers, the cover art. They look nice. Yeah, I really like the, the cover pretty. art. The blue and black. Uh, yeah, it's pretty sick. Uh, I was at the comic shop, and they're like, and uh, the register lady was like to her, the coworker, "How many of the variants have we sold?" And he's like zero, and I was like, "Oh yeah, variants. Let me see." And they're all just super bland. Yeah, I'm like. They like black and white stencil stuff or that's one of them one of them is more of a purpley but it's but it's a lot more uh complicated it's not quite as simple as okay. the thanos cover and i was like, just coming at you i'm like yo this thanos cover is too sick why would i want the variant <laughs> yeah. let's go cosmic everyone but yeah no I, I can't wait i hope that god killer armor proves useful did you guys see the leaked comic-con trailer of uh guardians of the galaxy uh no i didn't see the trailer but i saw a still from said leaked trailer and no. it's like all of them standing in a line near a staircase. Oh yeah, I saw the trailer. It was sick. Yeah? Yeah, you get to see Star Lord in action and then Batista turns around He's and distracts the destroyer. He's green, yeah. And they're all like standing in a line chained up. Yeah. And then John C. Riley, who's Noble Prime, yeah. says uh they call themselves the Guardian of the Galaxy. And someone behind him goes, No, they're just a bunch of assholes. <laughs> oh no, I did see that then. Yeah, okay, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, I was like, that's I hilarious. That. That's so funny. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty good. And then you see Groot, the the tree thing. It's all CG and just comes up. Yeah. But they're all wearing their uni they have their uniforms. Yeah. The blue and red uniform, mm -hmm. which I think what is What do cool. you think about the Nova Corps, their uniform? I didn't see any Nova Corps. Or oh. if I didn't see it, I missed it. I didn't see 
John C. Riley didn't have a mask on. Oh, he didn't have his helmet on. Yeah, it was just face. straight up John C. Riley. Yeah. You know what? All that's coming to my head is like his John C. Riley afro. Oh yeah, no, he did. Yeah, it, it did. Oh seriously? Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? Well, he went in the bucket head. No, I, I was hoping he was shaved. <laughs> oh, okay. I wish he had the bucket head though. Yeah, no, that movie. That movie could go either way. Yeah. Like, it could be the worst piece of shit ever or the greatest thing ever. Well, tying into this, I heard that they're also in the works for making an Inhumans movie. I think that's one step too far. I, this is what I've heard on speculation. I think what they're trying to do is that they're going to try and introduce more lesser-known teams, see how well they do. I mean, right, Guardians is not very popular. Yeah, I'm, yeah no, I just think, like, why the Inhumans? That's, like... Yeah, it's just one step over. But I mean, they're redoing the Fantastic Four next year, too. Yes, they are. And they just also said that we're not going to have a Fantastic Four X-Men crossover ever. Good. Ever, Good. period. Yeah, they're like, nope. So that Did they say of... anything about who's in the Fantastic Four? Not the characters, but... I was going to say... The cast. The cast. Uh, no, I don't... I have no idea who would be in the cast. Who would you want? Anything you know? Uh... Probably Chris Evans is... As, Shut up! As Shut as up! George, and Chris Evans is Invisible Woman. And Chris Evans as The Thing. And Chris Evans as Mr. Fantastic. That should be a good one. What about Andrew Reynolds? Uh, no. No Chris Evans. I, I think I want Liam Neeson as Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, okay. God? You want God as Mr. Fantastic? Yeah. You mean Odin? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Who okay, let's pick the important one. Who would you want as the hot one? Invisible Woman? Yeah. Oh, baby. Who yeah. would be your... Because I don't grab. No. Oh, I'm, no, I'm kidding. I know. Well, first of all, she has to be blonde. I know. No, she doesn't. Jessica Alba. I, I know. know. That turned out right. Yeah, I thought she was hot, but she was no Miss Invisible Woman. I don't know who I'd pick. That's too tough. That's like a life-changing question right there. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, picks of the week. Picks of the week. Let's do it. You know what? I'll start this one off. Yeah. So, uh... I don't really play fighting games. You don't? No, because it's just I don't have the uh, mental and physical dexterity. Aptitude? That's that's the word. I, the other word I was looking for, yes. <laughs> However, I like Persona. That is, yes. Actually, that is fact. like is, is too weak of a word. I, I love Persona. It loves you. L word. There we go. Uh, so I bought Persona 4 Arena, and I enjoyed it. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah. Go ahead and face Blaze. The thing I enjoyed most <laughs> no. was the uh, Persona 3 characters. Ah, so old, older, older Persona. All 3 the more yeah. older, badass Persona Three characters. Oh, Hiko looks so cool. Yeah. So uh, Japan randomly, just out of nowhere, the Persona Four arcade cabinets got updates. Did they? Yep. Yes. And uh, included in these updates, besides balance changes and extra stages, were older Junpei and Yukari from Persona Three. Dun dun dun. 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 And I was just like, man. I need to go to Japan. That <laughs> right is, now. That is too cool. And yeah, no, there's, I thought that was just exciting news. Uh, so far, it is confirmed only to be a Japanese cabinet update. They have, no, they, they have not commented on North American anything. Yeah, no, Arc System does this all the time yeah. with all of their games. Yeah. It's like Blaze Blue got a Cro Chrono Phantasma update. Yo, it'll never come to consoles ever. Yeah. It's like three months later. It's like, hey, we're coming to consoles. The thing is, the reason I have hope for this is uh, that Persona movie's coming out, the Persona 3 movie. Mm -hmm. And if they want to cash in on all the merchandise, on merch, I can see them doing it. Junpei, new Junpei figures, new Yukari figures. Yeah, and uh, new game. I can see them cashing in on that. If not this winter, next summer with the second movie. Nice. Uh, but yeah, no, it looks cool. Junpei, I'm kind of disappointed he's not like a hard store, hardcore hip hop gangster. He wasn't in the what? Yeah, but you kind of, you know, he kind of, he was kind of, he was, he was a bearded Yosuke. Yeah, but he. Yo, no, don't say that. Yo, yeah, he was. He was. But he had a he had a baseball cap. Yeah, and he was much more of a badass, and he got a girl. Who did? Junpei? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, uh, yeah, and and I don't even know what Yukari is. I, I was kind of hoping she was going to be like a magical girl. She like, looks like a super battle powers. warrior or something. She's like in armor She's and shit. She's kind of badass. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, so uh, uh, I'm excited if that ever comes out. I hope it does. Uh, I want the dog. Oh, uh, what's his face? Koronomar Konomaru or something? Koromaru, yeah. Koromaru. I'm surprised you didn't want Ken. Oh, or Ken. They were both in my party. I used both of those dudes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. I think that would be... That's it, right? That's all the characters. What about... Uh... The main protagonist? They could never do that. He'd be, he would have to be like the OP character. Main on main? 
<laughs> no, because they, they they nerfed to you. <laughs> what about they what about that guy in the red coat with the black toque? Oh who yeah, dies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was cool. Yeah, Shinji. Spoilers. Yeah, yeah. He was cool. He was cool. Uh, but he was never a real main character. He wasn't part of your party. I don't. Whatever. Who cares? Yeah, he was. But yeah, we never stuck around for more than a day. True. 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 Yeah. He was in there for like 10 floors. Yeah, and then he's like, I'm out. I'm dead. Bye. <laughs> yeah, is that how he got... Is that how he left? Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> then you had a bunch of extra equipment, and you're like, what do I do with this? Yeah, no, I think it looks cool. Uh, so when I go to Japan, that's the first thing I'm doing, and then I'll tell you how it was. <laughs> cool. Nice. Or you can just wait till it comes to console, and then now, then you can tell us how it's doing. No, I need to know now. <laughs> I need to know right soon. BRB, pause this. Oh, uh, we're pausing this podcast. I got to be to Japan right now. But yeah, no, that's uh, that's my pick. So I'm hoping for Super Persona 4 Hyper Fighting 2 Turbo. I really hope Extend. that's the name. <laughs> Extend Extra. Squared. Cubed. No, it's cubed. Yeah, I think it'd be awesome. Uh, Anthony, what's your pick of the week? Uh, my pick is also Hello Japanese. Uh, so I don't know if you guys know, but I love the Yakuza games. Yeah. They're like, they're like poor man's Grand Theft Auto. Uh, but... Yeah. They had these. Uh, they had this one feudal Japan version, which was really cool. Oh, that uh, one, yeah. It was called Yakuza Kenzan, and uh, Sega just unveiled that there is going to be another game called Yakuza Ishin or uh, Yakuza Restoration, only for Japan. And this is another thing of, oh God, please come out here, but it probably won't. Why? All the other ones have so far. Not the not the, the feudal one. The Feudal one hasn't come out here. It hasn't? Nope. Oh. That's the only one to not come out here. Oh, I could have sworn I played <clears throat> yeah. it. Yeah. So, with uh, with Yakuza 5 coming out, and like I'm not even sure if that's even going to be released here, because uh-huh. apparently Yakuza 4 sales weren't so good. Not surprised. Uh, yeah. Uh, the other part of this news is that they have a surprise announcement for Yakuza 5, which I don't know what it is, but I hope the surprise announcement is that it comes here. <laughs> to North America. <laughs> so my pick is basically hopes and dreams. Hopes and hopes dreams. and dreams. Uh, I just want to. I want to get that out there. Like so. Uh, so at at reply Sega bug Sega that you guys want Yakuza Five and Yakuza Restoration. Go. Uh, no. Send out the masses of all three people that listen to this. <laughs> That's not happening. No, probably not. Sorry, Yakuza. Your time yeah. in the sun is, dawn- is gone. <laughs> it's modern age Shenmue. No. Right. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No. That's right. You're right. It's better than Shenmue. Oh. I don't know. I have never played Shenmue. Hilarity. <laughs> 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 <Hey, there, too. laughs> I've played Shenmue. It's better than Shenmue. Well, I don't know. All right. That's it. All right. Blavin, finish out the segment. So my pick is hell American. America. America. Oh, we see where your allegiance lie. Yeah. Yeah, because this game's way better than all of them. Oh, 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 oh! Them's fighting words. What's this game you're talking about? Oh, Magic the Gathering. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. So, there's been um, If you guys have heard that I've been very excited for the next set coming up, the Greek theme set, Theros. Yes, yes. And they released spoilers because mm. the new dual deck that came out is coming out. Sorry, Heroes vs. Monsters features yeah. cards from the new Theros set. Yeah. So, I'm just going to talk to you guys about Tell you guys, sorry about the two card, the two key cards in the deck, and the two new two new mechanics that are coming up in Theros. So yeah. one of the cards is a green card. It's two colorless mana and a green and a green, so four in total, for a legendary creature Hydra called Polucranos World Eater, and it's a five five. So it reads like four four costs for five five. Yeah, that's okay. First of all. If you were to do this as a card in total, that's fucking bananas. <laughs> I just put that together. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, that's that, good. No, that's <laughs> really good. That's four four for four is amazing, and that would go in any deck. Snap. But four four for five, like five five for four, there has to be a downside. Yeah, there has to be, right? Let me tell you that there's not. Oh, <laughs> no. there is not, right, Teach? Is yes. it green, right? It's green. Okay, so no, this no, is no, like, no. bigger than usual green. So its ability is X colorless, X colorless, green. Okay. Mo- this is a new keyword, monstrosity X. 
That sounds like my type of strategy. <laughs> if this creature isn't monstrous, put X plus one plus one counters on it, and it becomes monstrous. So let me tell you about this for a second. What I think this ability is, is if I pay one mana, he gets two plus one plus one counters. Because the one will cover the first X and the second X. Right? Oh. Or are you paying... Oh, no, I, I, thought thought it, I thought it was two for one. Oh, okay. So there it's you like go, you pay it. you pay the green to pay it and to start it, and then the two X's are you pay two for one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So that, you, yeah. So like yeah. you put four total for two counters. Okay. Yeah. See, I don't usually do double X's, so this okay that makes more sense. Yeah, I was gonna say the other way around. That's fucking amazing. That would be, that would, that would be crazy. <laughs> but anyway, so this is what it says: when Pol Polucranos World Eater becomes monstrous. It deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures your opponents control. Each of those creatures deals damage equal to its power to Polucranos. So if you put, if you paid like 8 mana on yeah. this guy, so 4 and 4, or yeah, so you'd get 4 counters, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you need 9, because you need to pay the 1 green. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, whatever. But I'm, that's what I'm saying, that's yeah, what I'm yeah, jumping yeah. into the yeah, X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'll become a 9-9, nine, nine, dealing 9 damage... Are two. divided onto their team and then they get to crack back at him. But he's a 9-9. Nine, nine. I don't think they're going to have 9 power on the board to kill him turn 4. Yeah, true. And any turn... Because even if you drop him on turn 4, the next turn when you untap, you can at least put 2 counters on him because you had the 4 from when you cast them. These counters stay, right? Yeah, these counters stay, right? You have the 4 from when you cast him, right? And let's say you drop another land. You got 5 ready. That just seems insane to me. Yo, spoilers, so when we draft, I'm green, guys. No, well, you know like what? I always am. I'm always green, so... Well, that's the theme of this, that there's going to be monsters versus heroes. So green is probably going to be the monsters' colors, green and red. Yeah. yeah. So, Sick. on the converse side... Oh, legendary Greek monsters, right? That's why they changed the legendary oh. rule, because almost half the set's going to be legendary. Like, almost everything. Yeah, guys, Lands, monsters. probably equipment, probably mm -hmm. everyone. Uh, oh. The next one is... This is for the hero side now. We got Annex and Siamid. So it's one, red, red, white, for a legendary creature, human soldier, even though it's two people. <laughs> it's a 3-2. Yeah. So it has first strike and vigilance. Whoa, whoa, whoa. did you say it costs one? One, and colorless. And it's red or black? No, one, colorless, red, and white. Oh, so it's three. So it's three in total. Three. Okay, okay, okay. But again, for three mana, you get a 3-2 first strike vigilance. <laughs> Shit. Like, if it, mm. th this is fucking insane, mm. this card. And it's a. Oh, sorry. I know uh, Polycarnos is mythic, and this is rare. So, okay. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe this is just because of the dual deck, so it might change rarity when it's actually. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. But his ability is heroic. Whenever you cast a spell that targets Anax and Siamid, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain trample until the end of turn. That's fucking insane! So the minute you throw any sort of... What I didn't realize is that if I target him and then they counter my spell, it doesn't matter because I already targeted him. It's going to... So he gets the heroic him. ability no matter what. And carries through to the other team. Oh. No matter... As long as I targeted him once, either the spell doesn't have to resolve. As long as I attempted to cast something on Annex and Siamid or anything with heroic, the ability triggers. So it's almost a guaranteed... It's a guaranteed... Combat. All you have to do is declare it. So oh. basically, for this, basically you ship in your whole team. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, I'm gonna block this way. Boom, heroic. Yeah. Everybody gets huge. <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? Oh, by the way, oh, you're trying some more. Boom, another one cost spell, heroic again. It's like, whoa. I'm gonna. I'm sure that the other heroic feats aren't gonna be as backbreaking as this one. Yeah. Because that's that's pretty ridiculous. But. That, to me, that just seems insane as an ability. That sounds fun. See, like, when you have just all these cards that are just insane. Yeah. Like, it doesn't really change the, the, the playing field. Like, no, everything it doesn't. will still be even. But yeah, it's yeah. a lot more exciting. No, for sure. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to this set. This is going to be insane. Yeah. They're also introducing a new card type and card border for the god cards, one for each color. And I think it's appearing in Theros because Theros is the large set. And the two after it are the smaller expansion sets. Uh -huh. So they're going to be supporting Theros. Oh, new card type. What do you mean by new? As in, uh, I think they're going to have new abilities. And also the card border is different. I don't know if it's a new card type, actually. I might be wrong. But there's a new card border. Okay. Like, the borders are kind of gal galactic looking. So it's like they're in the night sky. Mm. And stuff like that. So okay. it's pretty crazy. 
But yeah, these two cards make me super excited for Theros. It's Sounds gonna like be fun. it's gonna be insane. Yeah, I'm really glad. I'm really excited to get it. Yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna pick this up. I don't know when the dual deck comes out. Uh, but I'm looking forward to talking about more spoilers. They released a bunch of other commons and uncommons from the set. Yeah. But I won't talk about those because they're just regular stuff. It's coming out September 6th. So, oh, so it's, it's like two weeks. Yeah, two weeks is very close. Wow. Okay. So that's all the picks. Those are all our picks. Sweet. Let's move on. So on to our weeks. Uh, you know what? Why don't you talk, Blue? Continue. Me? Just oh entertain my. me. Oh entertain God, me. No. Since we're on the magic train. We're on the magic train. Entertain me, son. Choo choo. Choo choo. Ah. So, as you can, uh, as Vince is probably reading from my uh, email, uh -huh. I participated in a Grand Prix trial for Detroit for Magic the Gathering. So now, to just to yeah. clarify, this uh, is like a. You didn't go to Detroit. This is a qualifier for Detroit? This is, a, this is not a qualifier. A Grand Prix tournament for Magic the Gathering is an open tournament that anybody can enter. But there's a substantial payout at the end, I think. And these qualifier, these trials that I go to, if I win these trials, I get buys at the tournament. Oh, I get to a maximum okay. of two buys. Okay. And I think you can redeem them at eight times. So yeah. if I am 5-0 yeah. and I need two more wins to get to top eight, I just go boom, it's take my open. buys, I'm up top eight. <laughs> Or it's like, who's my next opponent? Someone who can beat my deck. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I made top four. Ooh. So I a, know. You got a buy. No, I didn't. I, oh. I lost. <laughs> I, I, I came third. Okay. I, only, yeah, I heard you made top three. Yeah. <laughs> only, only the first person gets the two buys. Oh. But there's multiple trials around, so you can keep trying. I might try again. Okay, but why. but just to clarify, this is an open thing. Like uh, the, the Grand Prix Detroit is open. It doesn't matter yeah, how you do here. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I can just go and pay and try to go 14 0 and <laughs> sweep the whole thing, right? Good luck. It's all you. <laughs> so, as much as I always sort of bash constructed formats, yes. I always say that I don't play them and I'd rather play draft. It's. Yes. It's true that I love draft. Yes. And I think, to clarify to the viewers out there, my biggest problem with constructed formats was standard, where I would buy cards, they'd be good for a year, then they'd rotate out. Mm -hmm. Modern doesn't have that problem. Okay. It's a non-cycling format, so I can use any card from 8th edition onwards because they've been printed with the new magic borders as opposed to the old ones. Okay. So any card that has been reprinted with the new or or it's been printed with the new border or reprinted with the new border. Yeah. Those are legal and modern. So okay. that opens it up to a huge range of decks. Unlike standard, which once the metagame gets really cut and dry, the best decks are very obvious. Yes. In this, all as, as you said, everything's kind of insane. Yeah. It's just insane things clashing together. Yeah. So the deck that I ran for this Grand Prix trial, and this is my first time playing in a modern tournament, and actually my first time playing a full game of Modern yeah. was this deck called Living End. And it's a combo deck. And I'll just tell you guys that the re the thing that it does is that it switches my field with my graveyard. Oh, so I, t I take it what you have to do is basically mill yourself and then switch? I Yeah, this, well, my deck has cards that I can discard it to draw another card. From oh. my deck, so I dig for the combo while discarding creatures to my graveyard. Yeah. And then me and my opponent switch our graveyard and my field. Usually they don't have as many creatures as I do in the graveyard. Yeah. And they not prepared for it. Because so then suddenly you have an army and then Yeah, it suddenly yeah, so I get smashed in. Yeah. And also my deck has a sub theme of land destruction uh -huh. to keep everybody on the back foot. Mm -hmm. So just quickly I'll I'll tell you guys about the matches that I went through just mm -hmm. really quick. My first match was against this deck called Valakit. So Val or Escape Shift. Mm -hmm. So Valakit reads it's a land, it's legendary. If you have five or more mountains, I think. Yes. Anytime mm -hmm. another mountain comes into play under your control, yes, boss. you can deal three damage to target feature or player. Mm -hmm. What they do is they play another card called Scape Shift, which is the namesake of, namesake of the deck, where they sacrifice as many... I think they sacrifice as many lands as they want, or all their lands. I can't remember. But then you get to pick uh, that many lands from your deck and put it on the battlefield. So you pick Valakit and eight mountains. And so that's dealing, what, like 24 to me? Yes. So that's how they kill you. Oh one God. turn, boom. So they're just waiting on this one thing. Yeah, I destroyed the, this, the person I faced. I destroyed all his lands. Oh. So he didn't get anywhere. <laughs> wow. Uh, second, second person I faced 
was Red Black Burn. And this is where I realized that in modern, if you guys can believe this, the first five to ten damage you're doing to yourself. Ooh, that sounds like a fun deck. <laughs> yeah, so they have these things called fetch lands where it's you tap it, sacrifice it, pay one life, search your deck for uh there's different color combinations. Yeah. So the ones I had in my deck was a swamp or a mm -hmm. mountain, swamp or whatever. It, 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 there's cards for different ones. There's 10 of them in yeah. total. And put it in play, tapped. Mm -hmm. Then you can look for another set of lands called shock lands. So for example, let's just say I play, I'll just use this for example, Verdant Catacombs. I can tap it, sacrifice it, pay one life to search for a swamp or a forest and put it into the play tapped. Okay. I would look for another card called Overgrown Tomb which is both a swamp and a forest. And when it comes into play, I may pay two life to make it come into play untapped. So I pay one life to search for or er, Overgrown Tomb. When it comes into play, I pay two life so that it comes into play yeah. and I'm able to use it immediately. Okay. That's three life. Got it. And I have to do that for almost all my lands. Wow, so you, you basically... Yeah. Just kill yourself until you're ready to go. But Burn oh, okay. is monocolored yeah. and every bit of damage they want to squeeze out of you. Right, so they, I'm helping them. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's counterintuitive. That's funny. Yeah, but the way I beat that one, I think, was I sideboarded life gain. So oh. Just a little bit of life gain. You know, if he did X amount of damage to me, I gained six. It's like, ah, I don't have enough cards to deal with you. Good call. Um, third match I played was a very bad matchup for me. It was called Soul Sisters. Soul Sisters. Soul Sisters. Soul Sisters is a mono white <laughs> weenie deck that has these two cards, which are basically the same card, Soul Attendant and Soul Warden. Yeah. Each cost one, or each are one ones. They're creatures, but whenever a creature comes into play, yeah. you gain one life. Okay. And they have this one card, which is one white, for a 1-1, one, one, flying, but if you have 30 or more life, it gets plus 5, plus 5, and lifelink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy. And they have this other card, which says, you may reveal this card from your hand, and gain... and discard it and you gain no when you play this card sacrifice it it's a creature and you reveal as many white cards as you want from your hand and you gain three times the amount of life as you reveal white cards yes so basically you could play it turn one next turn sacrifice it reveal your other cards if you have four or more white cards you put yourself up to 32 boom your one one is now a six six life liquor on turn two yeah Shit. Yeah, so that happened. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. that's awesome. But he didn't have that one card. He just gained life normally and just smashed me. Um, <laughs> my other match was against another deck that I really like. It's called Urzatron. And that's one of the decks that I own personally. It's a deck that require it has these three lands called Urza's Mind, Urza's Tower, and Urza's Power Plant. If all three of those lands are on the field at the same time, one of those lands taps for three, another one taps for two, and another one taps for two, colorless. Oh my god. So they, those three lands tap for seven mana yeah. as early as turn three, if wow. you get the combo out. Wow. That happens a lot. <laughs> what also happens is that I have land destruction destroy each piece that they search out, because oh. I know they don't have it in their <clears> hand, <throat> and they put some on the back foot. Yeah. That's how I managed to win that one. Uh, and then afterwards, I went into top four. I played the red-black person again. And I did the same strategy. But then I faced again. I faced the, the deck that really eventually beat me. Yeah. Called Kiki Jiki. So this deck, bear with me here, is... And it's also called Splinter Twin. Splinter Twin. Uh, it's those two cards interchangeably. So they play this card called Deceiver Exarch or Pestermite. They both have the same ability. When it comes into play, you tap or untap target permanent. Yeah, yeah. So you, you can untap something. They play it. Whatever, right? They have some protection for it so that it doesn't get killed right away. Then they play either Kiki Jiki, which is a creature, or Splinter Team, which is an aura. Okay. So I'll tell you the, the general ability. The general ability is tap, make a token that's a copy of the enchanted creature, mm -hmm. and it has haste. So Deceiver x Shark A gets the Splinter Twin, let's say. Mm -hmm. Tap him, create a Deceiver x Shark. That ability triggers, untaps the original one yeah. with the Splinter Twin, Tap it again, make another X Oh my god. Yeah, untap. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So they make 295,000 <laughs> swing at once with haste. I'm sure I win. Yeah. And he did! Yeah. Because I couldn't disrupt his combo. I was going to say, like, huh? Yeah, that sounds like shit. 
Yeah, because I didn't know how. I don't know. This, this, this when it happened, thing. did he just put his hand on the card and keep going like tap on tap? No, you know, no, no. Was he just he cool? Just he just like tapped it once and he looked at you and you guys both knew what happened. Like, <laughs> no, he didn't do that to me because I didn't know what the deck was. Oh. Uh, to another opponent, he just revealed the two cards and the guy scooped. Oh, he's like fuck, I'm out. Yeah, because he knew that he didn't have anything. He was tapped out and the yeah. combo was coming next turn. The opponent that he beat in the finals, the guy who f- beat me was ended up winning. Yeah. The guy who he beat in the final played this insane deck called Storm. Yeah. This guy basically all he does is play one red mana or two red mana, gain three red mana. Yeah. Two red mana, gain three red mana, two mm-hmm. red mana, gain three red mana, pay two red mana, gain three red mana. These are all with spells. Yeah. Cast either one of two things. Usually he casts empty the warrens. Yeah. I think it's like one red red. I can't remember the cost. But it gives you two goblins, two one one goblins for every previous spell you've cast this turn. Oh my god. Oh, okay. So he would play spells that would allow him to play more spells in one turn. I get it, yeah. Then cast that, then get a hundred goblins. But uh, the the player who beat me just kept bouncing his lands. Yeah. And he couldn't he couldn't play enough mana to do a combo mm-hmm. and he assembled this combo first wow that's cool and then wow. there's also a counter spell which is one blue red and it's uncounterable yeah. and you counter every spell you don't control oh so everything on the stack will just fizzle fizzle and yeah. then you lose and the reason I really cl- thought the storm deck was cool was because Vince you'd like this Thanks. he literally had like eight cards in his hand and he dropped it all at once. Oh yeah, that if is he weird. didn't if he didn't win, yeah. He he there's no plan B. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. That's an awesome. That's this, all or nothing type of deck. This deck has I I don't think it has any creatures. Uh, it's just you either win or you don't. Oh man, that sounds awesome. It's insane. I like that. It's insane. It's crazy. I wonder what his win rate is. It's it's a very competitive deck. Uh, but you have to make sure that you know the how much mana you're producing. If you produce the wrong color, it's like, oh I can't pay for this spell. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta know it, I guess. Yeah, so yeah, this whole experience was great. I really loved it. I made twenty seven bucks. Awesome. So you came third, right? I came third. So you are Joey Wheeler. Like you're not the settle kind. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I am the Joey Wheeler. Because you make it sound like, oh, yo, this is like legit. Like, because modern seems like the the advantage is you get to play whatever you want, right? But then the other problem is you you would come up against almost anything. Yeah. No, no, right? no, for sure. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty. That's pretty impressive. That. Because I'm assuming you have to know all the cards available. In play. I didn't know anything. Oh shit! I went in here. Shit. They play a card. I always ask, "Am I dead?" <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "Dude, it's a basic forest." I'm like, "No, seriously, am I dead?" <laughs> I didn't know any of the cards going in here. Uh, okay, it was insane to see. Uh, so I I, it was insane. So and apparently my the deck that I was using yeah. everybody knows about. Oh, <laughs> so they're no. just like so they had hate for it. But yeah. no, it was really fun. It was really exciting. And yes, you're right. I Joey Wheeler that. Was, <laughs> I I must say I made some pretty clever plays myself, but I, I bet you I bet you did think they were clever, Joey. I did <laughs> in my head, but oh man, these these this is a really fun format. I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna stick to this format. I already have three decks made, oh, okay. so it's, I think it's it's gonna be awesome. I I want to attend Detroit. This will be my first Grand Prix, big Magic tournament. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. So yeah, that's that's been the gist of my week. Mm. That's the biggest thing that's happened in my week, anyway. Mm. Damn. I know. Exciting. I know. Exciting. Oh, it sounds like he's, uh... Hmm. He's shifting <laughs> towards one, eh? Yeah. Where's the jujitsu this week? Uh-oh. The, let me tell you what's happening in the next weeks. There's the Vanguard World Championships on the 31st, a Toronto Grappling Tournament on the 7th, and Detroit on the 13th. So I have three weeks of straight tourneys. Wow. wow. I'm going to be pushing my limits. Wow. You know, I was thinking, Anthony uh, said that your decision would uh, depend on a girl. Yeah. What if he found a girl in jiu-jitsu and magic? Then that what? That doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a thing. You don't know that. <laughs> uh, that's not a thing. I he the same he idea. could go to Detroit. So you're saying that I, I'll meet a girl in the grappling tournament and then... Run into her in Detroit as my first opponent. No, I don't. I don't, I don't <laughs> Yo, what is this storybook? No, man, that's that's too fucking fairy tale. I mean, like, and she's from Eight Mile. I just mean like <laughs> one is blonde, one is brunette. They come from different worlds. Oh, you mean there's two different girls? Oh, yeah. competing. Yeah. Oh. I thought you meant there was one girl who was into both. No, you're right. That doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a thing. Wait, so that would just make even more complicated and layered. Yeah. 
That's then terrible. we document the whole thing yeah. and like sell it on DVD. That's terrible. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> people like my amateur breakthrough into the film industry to be like, does, does he pick the girl he can tap? Yeah. The girl he can tap? Oh! <laughs> that's, the, that's the byline. Uh, you get it though, right? Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> I'm a fan of puns, I get it. That'd be a cool movie poster. Or tapped out because, you know, you're tapped out in magic and ta- you tap them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, this is gold. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. I'm excited for you. <laughs> if I, if it seems I, like you're more excited for yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah you, if this, if this, if I get on the future match on daily MTG and stuff, I'll ask you guys the link. Oh, you totally. watch me. You can watch me choke. Yeah. 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 No, I'm excited because like, um, if if this dual girl scenario does happen, I can't wait till he's like, I can't, I can't yes, wait till he's like. Yo, Anthony, or yo, Vince, or yo, TJ, I need to make some fucking excuse to, because I can't meet with this girl, but blah, blah, blah. I gotta do, like, fucking timeline scenarios, and I just, I gotta lie. I can't do it. Like, I'm saying, I need I need support. I need I need you guys to cover And then, and then I'd be like, okay, I'm covered, and I just fuck shit up. <laughs> hey, let's go to here. I heard there's a free jujitsu exhibit. Oh, wait. Hey, Blavin, what's up? <sighs> yeah, I think that'd be fantastic. So you guys aren't even excited for me to compete or wish me luck. You just want me to find a girl and then drama. Totally, man. This <laughs> is terrible. Drama makes everything Drums. more exciting. Drums. Anthony, you got drama in your life? No. Well, then what have you been doing this week? Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, Vigi Games. I'm awesome. playing more Fallout New Vegas. Okay. Uh, I finally got into the DLC. And the first one I tried was called Old World Blues. And in this one, you go to a... Like, just totally effed up drive in in the middle of the night, and there's a satellite on the ground. And you can get, you can touch the satellite, and you get transported to this place called the Big Empty. It's a new, it's a new land that's not part of the main Fallout New Vegas continent. Like, it's a different area. Yeah. And uh, what happened is that there are these, uh, well, they used to be scientists, but what they've done is that they put their brains into machines. And they're like these floating, uh, robot people where uh, their two eyes and lips are on computer monitors and they mm. just float around and all they do is science. They just experiment with things, experiment with the people who come in and you've learned that upon your arrival you were knocked out and they stole your spine, your heart, and your brain. Well. So it's kind of like a Yellow Vic Road type scenario. I'm assuming you're not in your body. No, you are in your body. You It is replaced with a robot spine and a robot heart, but your brain, you don't have a brain. You have like a receiver? Be- yeah, it's like, what happens is that there's like these uh, Tesla coils they put in your head. Awesome. And then it it sends out wireless signals to your brain. Oh, great. So wherever your brain is, because they lost it, yeah, uh, you can still function. That's their excuse. <clears throat> okay. Right? And it's, the, the, the characters and the story are just as ludicrous as the premise of the DLC. It, it, okay. They're, they all have these weird personalities. Like this one female scientist, uh, who's a, also a, a jar brain, yep. is uh, obsessed with hu- uh, human biology. So she always makes these like weird, like like heavily breathing bleeps and bloops when she's scanning your body. And they make all these weird like innuendos to her like basically pleasuring yourself while scanning you and stuff. We oui, we. Oui. Uh, but the whole point is that <laughs> there is <laughs> tell me more. Yeah, there is a there is a another scientist who's also a brain oh, in the thing. Okay. And he splintered off from the group. He had these wild ideas. And he's so, a visionary. Yeah, he was a visionary and they didn't agree with him. Okay. So he's he's I think he's called Dr. Nefarious. Yeah, all right. right? And he's made Real original. Yeah, and oh, well, that's the thing. And he's made an army of Robo Scorpions yes. to torment the other people or the other scientists in the Big Empty to basically keep them where they are. And uh, yeah, the story plays out like that. It starts off as you need to do fetch quests for these people so that you can get your your body parts back, pretty much. Uh-huh. And like all the different quests are kind of like the different trials, like courage, mm-hmm. uh, intelligence, all that stuff. Like, so to get your brain back in the intelligence, there's like, w- there's, yeah, there, I don't want to say any more because the, the payoff at the end is actually really funny. Can you just like not finish this quest and complete the rest of the game? No. Uh... So once you go in, you, you cannot leave the big empty until you've completed the thing. Damn. But the thing is, once you've completed the DLC, 
you can actually opt into having a robot spine and having a robot heart and having a robot brain. Any gameplay advantages? Or? Yeah, there's a bunch of different perks. Like, if you have the robot portions, it's like your torso can't be crippled, your head can't be crippled, you, you're, like, extra resistant to poison because your heart is in a heart. I'm assuming there's but, drawbacks? No. Like, are you... No? You're just... There's no, like, like 8,500% weaker to electricity? No. No. Or like, it's just or all, maybe you get charged from electricity? From what I remember, it's all boosts. It's just that when you get your other things back, yeah. you, there's different boosts. So it's like I would put my I put my regular spine back in my body, but it's like some of the technology is still remnant from your robot spine. So you get so it's like you lose being able you your torso can be crippled again, uh -huh. but you gain these other abilities hmm. and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a trade off like that. Do you want to be more robot than human or more human than robot? Cyborg all the way. Yeah. And uh, it's it's actually a really fun DLC. It's really humorous. Uh, all the different challenges of levels. And uh, especially... This is one of those games. It's Well, it was originally a Bethesda game, Fallout 3. And it is one of those games where if you read the books, or in this case, the computer logs mm -hmm. of the area, you get so much more. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I spent a lot of time just reading computer logs and like figuring out what this building was like a test site for a stealth suit. And uh, they... They thought it was uh, being sneaking was too lonely for the people who were in like long term tests, so they made the suit talk. Oh yeah, so it's like this female voice who like talks to. He's like, "Are you my friend? I like you." And wow. then when you get into combat, it's like sneaking done. Start shooting, please. Oh wow. Yeah, and it's just like all this extended lore type stuff, and it's it's really funny. And I I beat it. It's really it's really good. Cool. So I'm looking forward to checking out some of the other DLC once I get higher level. You know. Uh, and then I did a bunch of stuff IRL. <laughs> and uh the first one is our local university mcmaster they have a planetarium in their school or in one of the buildings yeah and uh every wednesday they have a different um like show pretty yes. much and i went to one on wednesday it was about uh light pollution oh yes that's why we can't see the stars yeah it's like why we can't see the stars what are some ways to stop light pollution and even it went into different things of like what are the reasons why those big big telescopes are placed in mountains and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's not just because of light pollution, but that's also because the air is thinner. So the light from stars have le has less distance to travel through our atmosphere, yeah, which makes yeah. it easier to see stars and stuff. Yeah. And that's why they put telescopes into space, because mm -hmm. what's, nothing there. Yeah, what's no atmosphere, right? Yeah. They just see forever. Yeah. Uh, quick question. So I know I've never seen it, but I'm assuming you also have never seen, like, what a real night sky looks like. Uh, I know Blavin's seen one. Yes, I've yes. been out into the country, like, just, like, in the boonies. Yeah. So I don't know how, like, it was, there weren't any lights around us except for the house light. Yeah. So, like, I've seen a night sky. Like, it looks pretty nice. I don't know if it's, like, the, like, the perfect I could possibly see a night sky, but it was really nice. Like, is it just, like, what you, like, if I were to walk outside right now, is it, like, that with just more stars? No, there's a lot more details. Like, it's not just black. It's, like, yeah. it's, like, black and blue and, like, the stars shine different yeah. colors and stuff. I think I'm pretty sure really when you saw it, it was like different colors, different and purplish. And yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, the other cool Same. thing I learned is about shooting stars, yep. which aren't actually moving. So what? And they're not actually stars. So what they are? It's space dust. Yeah, they're just and, burning up in the atmosphere. Yeah, and since the Earth is moving so fast yeah. through its rotation, yeah, the dust comes into contact with the atmosphere. It creates such friction that it creates light and then it it fizzles away and it looks like a shooting star because we're moving so fast yeah. and like all that stuff like that and all the different ways to get rid of light pollution and stuff like that are was really was really interesting just from simple things of like creating uh barriers for that like there's no wasted light so that light is only shone on the areas that you want it to uh -huh. be and it's not just like a bulb shooting light into the sky for no reason mm -hmm. And stuff like that. And it was really educational. It was actually really fun. The thing about light pollution is, what are the benef benefits, apart from vi the visible sky, what are the actual other benefits? Did they mention that? Uh, from what I noticed, like, severe light pollution has actually uh, effects on your eyesight. Okay. And that was the main one, and really the only one I remembered. Yeah. Okay. And it was because, so, like, during the nighttime, it's like, we can actually see in the dark pretty well. Mm-hmm. But... We need time to adjust, our eyes to adjust to the night. Yep. But with uh, an overabundance of light and light pollution, it doesn't give our eyes that chance to adjust. 
So that's why people are always like, oh, fuck, it's so dark, I can't see. Or, But it's because the artificial light from, like, street lamps and shit <clears throat> don't allow our eyes to adjust, and we never we never get that break of being able to adjust. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty cool, and it was, it was really educational. It was fun. Neat. And then the the other thing I did is that I, I went to a concert in Toronto. Oh. Uh, a band I like called The Sword. Oh, yes. They're a, they're a metal band. Yeah. And it was my first metal concert. And, and it was... Like, this band isn't, like crazy death metal screaming like if i could compare it to any band i don't i don't know if you guys know but black sabbath yeah yeah i never heard of them <laughs> yeah they're more like that it's you can still understand what they're saying and like yeah, yeah it's yeah, not know, it's I more know. of a head banging type thing rather than like i'm super angry i'm just gonna gargle a bunch of words at you okay and it was uh it was really fun it was at a place called lee's palace in toronto <laughs> <laughs> what yeah they mentioned it's got blue oh okay and uh, and yeah, I know it was it was super fun. Cool. The I went into a mosh pit. What was that like? A lot of pushing. Did you get hurt? No. But so what happened was I was like, I want to go in this mosh pit. So I jump in, and then I get pushed like for a while, and I'm pushing other people. Then all of a sudden, the pushing stops, and I'm like, I somehow got pushed out. I yeah. don't know what happened. <laughs> they, they took a look at you like, nope. They're like, oh, get out of here. Well, yeah. So I don't know what happened. It was it was really weird. Like I'm, I don't know the. The etiquette for mosh pits. I don't think there's any. I Maybe. think I think if you show your dominance, you're accepted. <laughs> yeah, so it's like I was in, and I was like, but it was like being in a really filled bouncy castle for a while, and then all of a sudden I was outside of it, and I was just like, watch this happen. Yeah. But yeah, the the show they played uh, with uh, some other bands. Uh, one was called American Sharks, and the other one was called Castle. Uh, Castle had a uh, Castle was weird. I didn't really like them so much. They had a female lead singer. But it was a three-piece band, and it seemed like all three of them mm-hmm. had a different idea for what they wanted the band to sound like. Sounds but good. instead of reaching a conclusion, yeah. they just all played their own sound oh, at the same that's... time. It was really weird. It's unique. Yeah, man. Yeah. They're, but... they're trying something different, but it's not working. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't for me. Apparently, they're they're kind of well-known, but that wasn't mine. I don't know. I, if I haven't heard of them, they're not yeah. well-known. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the indie <laughs> scene, bro. Okay. okay. <laughs> I don't know. And then uh, the American Sharks were more of a, a thrash metal, so it's more like fast paced, uh, really jump around. American going. Sharks. Huh? Yeah, the American Sharks, and uh, they were funny guys. Actually, they they played they talked a lot to the audience in between songs. They seemed like decent dudes. I got to talk with the drummer after like during the show because mm-hmm. they were they were at the merch booth, and yeah, they were really nice guys. And yeah, the whole the whole experience was was super cool, cool. super awesome. Cool. And also being in Toronto is usually fun. Yeah? Yeah. And that was it. That was my week. I'm surprised you didn't... Uh, what's the current indie darling right now? Or video games? Video games? Something about going home? Gone home? Is that it? I'm, I'm, going home? I think so. I think that's that's the game, right? Gone home? Gone I think home? it's called Gone Home. I know there's also Brothers. Yeah, I know Like, there's some really hot indie games in the video game scene. I thought, I thought you'd be all over those. Nah. I'm all about you. I'm all about mainstream games. Okay. Who are you? Me? No. 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 Yeah, it's it's called Gone Home. Okay. Yeah, Fulbright Company. But oh, yeah, no, I heard about it like that and and the other one I mentioned, Brothers. Brothers. Like they seem, I don't know. I've only heard like bits and pieces about them. Like I have no clue what they're actually about. You're not supposed to. It's all about, <laughs> it's all about experiencing it, man. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know. That doesn't really <laughs> interest me. You know what I'm excited for? What? Saints Row Four. <laughs> that could be the. F- but that's the furthest from indie there is. Oh, I can't wait to be the president of the United States running around naked. Is that next week? I think so, yeah. Mm. And fighting aliens. And flying. Have fun. Be great. Have the time of your life. <laughs> Do whatever and you also want. also use an anal probe weapon. Saw that. Yeah. yeah. Or there's a one called the Inflatron, Inflatron or something. It's like, and you just literally inflate people. Yeah, that's, and uh, then they explode. that's just mean. <laughs> <laughs> that is me. Terrible. This game, game of the year. I haven't even played it yet. Okay. Game of the year. Okay, there, buddy. Yeah, that's my week. All right. Uh, for my week, nothing really new. Um, Breaking Bad returned, and considering that, is that game... still good. Is that still a thing? You know what? Yeah, that's the best show on television right now. <gasps> yeah, it's fucking awesome. Okay, it's really good. If you haven't been watching Breaking Bad, you guys should watch Breaking Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Pro tip. It's like nah. it's pretty awesome. It's like uh, drugs. 
pretty awesome. It's it's about drugs. Drug, drug, drug. It's like drugs. <laughs> it's a sh- it's... the show is literally like cocaine. I can't have enough. But they do math in that show. Whatever, Isn't... man. Okay. Whatever. They do... Eventually, they have all the drugs. All the drugs. <laughs> You want drugs? We got it. Uh, last week I watched Firefly, and then I watched the Serenity movie, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This week I watched Firefly and the Serenity movie again. Okay. <laughs> nice! <laughs> Jesus! You love Firefly. Only this time, I finally took out that book, I read every page, I followed the episode with the script, and then I watched it with the commentary. That, wow. So it's like, to watch it twice? Yeah, oh my god. Well, not all the episodes have commentary, so. Oh, okay. Whatever. Let me tell you. I want to watch Firefly again. Why? I don't know. I can't stop. Uh, it's always on in the background now. I can't stop it. It's like a drug. Yeah, I know how you feel. But yeah, no, uh, guys, I like Firefly. So there we go. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Do you like Firefly? No, sorry. I love Firefly. Do you like it or do you like like it? Uh, I, I, I got more than a substantial crush on it. Okay. Wow. You know, it's it's pretty there. I also caught up on Kamen Rider Wizard. I did you? You know uh, what's her face? The one, the young one who's part of an idol group. Oh, oh, the girl who relies on his her magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's her name? I can't remember. Anyways, you know, like throughout the entire show, she kind of like doesn't do anything. Yeah, she kind of just and she doesn't even leave the house. She listens to a crystal ball and tells people where monsters are. The backstory behind that is she's part of an idol group, so she has a tough schedule. So that's why they kind of had to like write her to the side. Really? Yeah. Thing is, she's actually like the most important character in the show. So oh, these what? final ten episodes are all about her. That's wow. hilarious. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Also, revealing of the bad guys, pretty intense. Also, if you thought that girl con writer was the only extra con writer, there's back? two more. What? Yes. Cool. So, there you go. Um, I didn't catch up on Kyo Ryuger. Yep. But I did watch something, and apparently there's like 11 of them now. What? what? Yeah. Oh. There's like the main five, the gold one is the sixth, then there's Cyan, Violet, there's two Violets actually, Ray, uh, and then there's of course the evil dinosaur one. Oh, uh, cool. They have red eyes? No, he's like Indigo. That's weird. Whoa. Yeah. He's called Death Ryuger. Whoa! <laughs> I kind of spit a little. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Death Ryuji. Whoa, that's awesome! <laughs> wow! Yeah. What the fuck? Doesn't that sound cool? Do they still do the samba dance every episode? Oh, of course. That's awesome. I'm looking up Death Ryuji. Yeah, he's he actually looks kind of cool, and for being indigo, he's pretty cool. Uh, I still haven't, you know, I'm not watching that show, though. I'm just, I just kind of, someone had told me about it, so I wikied them all, and I'm like, whoa. Ooh. I was like, because the first Violet was his doctor, then he turned to a grandfather, and then he's like, he had a granddaughter, and she's like, can I be Violet? He's like, sure, you're Violet now. No, we can what? both be Violet. Yeah. Wow. Holy Did shit. that American dude show up again? Yeah. Is he just the main cast now? He's he's guest star, so he comes back whenever they need him. Bina san. Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of awesome. That kind of all time is awesome. Yeah, that yeah. accent. Yeah. Hella jelly. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know where Kyoyuji is going, but it sounds like they're going to get, like, 35 rangers. <laughs> I can't awesome. wait till I hear about evil samba dancing. Yeah, so it'll it'll be something. Whatever. Um, But the, the big idea this week was toy hunting again. Oh. Last week I talked about Star Wars. Mm. This week I'm talking about Star Wars. Oh, there you go. Sand Troopers. I did get Sand Troopers. Now, am I led to believe you guys have seen this already? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you've seen it in packaging. Packaging. Yeah, in packaging, yes. Yeah, what did you guys think when you saw it? It looks pretty cool. I didn't realize that the Sand Trooper you're talking about had that little plate on the side of its shoulder. So yes, he has the pauldron, the orange pauldron, right? <laughs> yeah, the pauldron. To show that he is the captain of the brigade, That's right? Hilarious. Wow. That's hilarious. So, uh, again, again, Nerd. magnificent packaging, although my friends have shown me the American packaging, and now I want to get rid of these. Why? Because the American packaging, on ours, this is Canada, right? Yeah. Trilingual. We have Black Series, Low Black Series, and Something mm-hmm. Noir. La Series Negra? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, in America, it just says The Black Series. And on the back of the box, where we have a little bio, a bio in French, a bio in Spanish, they have yeah. a bio in English and a quote from the character. Okay. Um, 
And it's little things like that that annoy me. So basically, it's like you want the part where it's, is the more could speak English? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's what I want. I mean, you know what? Diversity. Fuck off. I want... You want solid, clean... <laughs> Listen, if that was the case, I'd be in power. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah. So, so the Sand Trooper, now, I was expecting, you know, he's going to be like Darth Maul, limited articulation. Whatever. He's going to be okay. Uh, and for the most part, he is kind of like that. Sorry for the noise. I'm pulling him out of this plastic. <gasps> and I think this guy's fucking cool. Cool. I think he's super cool. He can't really do much, you know? A lot of his armor bits are kind of like... In the way. In the way. I can't lift my arm out because it's armor. But then I look at the movie and I'm like, you know what? You couldn't do anything cool either in the movie. <laughs> uh, what else could he do? You could take off his head. Oh! That popping noise. Yeah, and there's like this <laughs> giant ball joint and you could take this pauldron off so he could just become a regular chump. What? Hey guys! That's, so, that's kind of sexy. And he's just kind of like, yo, I'm just a grunt. Someone kill me. Let's go. <laughs> and I like it. Um... I like this toy a lot, and I think that I'm just going to abandon collecting all the characters I want and just get every version of the stand, uh, the Stormtrooper. Storm See, there is a lot of Stormtrooper love. You know that, right? Yeah, I know. You know how hard it is to find this guy at stores? You want to know why there's a lot of Stormtrooper love? Because he looks just so pathetic sometimes. Yeah, oh, he's like a Zaku. Yeah, uh, that's... Yes. <laughs> and I think Zakus are dumb. Yeah. But it's like the grunt guys who get no love deserve the most love. Because yeah. it looks so sad. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know why they give him a frown on the helmet. Yeah, even the helmet's kind of sad. He's yeah. Like, oh, and man. this one has, like, they painted in, like, baby blue, like, sections that look like teardrops to me. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's true. Like, and he has dust all over him, like he just fell over or something. Yeah, because he's, you know, he's from in the desert. And it's like, oh, I'm all dirty. I can't be clean. I'm by myself. Oh, oh. I'm a pathetic fucking grunt. Don't oh, kill I'm me. Making, I'm just making money for my family on the Death Star. Yeah, I, I like to think that each one of these guys has a story that they have to tell, that but no one wants to listen, listen to. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, man, I love him. He's so cool. <laughs> this could be my toy of the year just because of how pathetic he is. As we, as we watch closely, Vince, his stone heart slowly cracks, I, I, I revealing kinda, a soft, warm it's, glow. It's kind of like you see it and you... you I know what you mean. You felt this kind of connection with it. And it's like, oh, you're so pathetic. I can't yeah. help but not like you. Yeah. <laughs> He's so cool. Like, and, you know, I do have some complaints. I, I kind of wish... Why are his accessories so clean? Like, they, they, came out, they just came out of the factory. This man's been wandering the desert all his life. And it's like, why do you have such brand new... Weaponry? Why isn't it like rusted? Why I'll tell it... you. I'll tell. I'll give you a backstory on why. Oh, okay. It's because he's, it's the only thing he can keep clean. Oh, okay. It's the one thing he is pride himself on. <laughs> oh, and then I bet you any money, the next weapon pack is a, a dirty one oh. for extra sadness. <laughs> for extra sadness. What I want to do is buy like silver brown paint, like, and put a lot of water into it, and then just, uh, just really just brush on all the accessories, and then let it dry. Like, just brush it unevenly. So it looks like shit. And then just be happy with that. You know what? You do that. Go nuts. I will. I will. But uh, yeah, no, I like the Sand Trooper. He's, he's cute. Uh, I can't wait to get like all the cool looking ones too. Like the, the super clean one. Um, <laughs> the white one? Yeah. Who are the... I think they're called the 501st. They have like the blue stripe and stuff. And they have like a like a horn on their helmet. Oh, interesting. Like, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, they're yeah. the 501st. I can't wait to get like... The um, one with the antenna? Yeah, I think so. Next or week, Vince makes his own Stormtrooper. <laughs> Costume and he becomes one of the, part of one of the legions. Oh yeah, I'll become one of the five. Are you first. gonna? Are you also gonna get the red guys, the Imperial Guard? Mm, I don't know, cause I mean, like they're the Imperial Guard. I don't know. They're they're a bit up there. They get paid well. Oh no! Look, <laughs> <laughs> you can't reach my gun. Hey guys, give me back my poultry. Come on. No, I'm just. I just made the stormtrooper have this really pointing look. Like, oh man, it's coming. Also, the poultry <laughs> makes a cool ring. Yeah, like I. I can, there's a lot of scenarios where I can make some creative poses with these guys in the background just being pathetic. And uh, I can't wait. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Star Wars Black Series Sand Trooper. If you can only pick one, pick the Sand Trooper. He's the coolest in the wave. He's also pretty... Uh, it's pretty expensive. Small he is. Yeah, he you is. guys said he's like 30 bucks at the comic shop? Yeah. Like, holy shit. How much is everybody else? 20 bucks at Walmart. Oh, man. Yeah. Can't people Walmart? Yeah, but then I mean, you can't really find these at the stores. Like, people are just buying this up because you know how people like to troop build? Oh, they make their own oh. trooper. Yeah. Have you ever seen someone troop build something? Like, when troop build gets just out of control? No. I've seen, I've seen people, like, have 
upwards of like a hundred of the same figure just to create an army. Wow. Holy smokes. You know, like there's like that one scene in Star Wars where like there's just a row of troops in, of stormtroopers. Yeah. Like I've seen that recreated in toys. The dumbest thing I've ever seen is you guys ever seen you know Zaku's? Yeah. I've seen there's a perfect grade Zaku out there. I've seen someone have like ten of them, and then there's like Shar's red one in front. Yeah. Oh, cool. And it's like it's a little battalion. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, those Italian. are all perfect grades. Like, what the hell? And they're are all you... painted, it's, and they're all perfect. It's like, what are you doing with your life? Like, making awesome recreations yeah, from so, Gundam, obviously. The goal for me is never to get a double, but I hope that there's so many variants that I do end up with an army. You could have like a little stormtrooper tea party. Yeah. I kind of want to get like accessories, like a washroom with urinals. They're all peeing. Yeah, you know. I don't know. Park Two of them are high-fiving each other. Yeah, the park benches. You know how it is. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, but the big toy I got this week was, of course, SH figure at Sailor Moon. Yep. Um, Moon Tiara action. Be Shoujo Senshi. Fighting evil by moonlight. Yeah, you know, soldier of uh, love and justice. Mm-hmm. Boo. Uh, something like that. Why What's, what do you boo? No, for? I don't know. Yeah, so Sailor Moon. Uh, probably one of the most anticipated toy releases of the year. Uh, I'll tell you right now, she's fucking awesome. That's about it? Or... No, I have more to say. There's some... <laughs> she's fucking awesome. Go get it. The, the one thing... She comes with a lot of crap. That's what I'll say. And I, I realize, too, that you got two extra faces. Yes. Okay, I'll touch upon that later. Here's, here's what she comes with. Okay? She's Sailor Moon. She's a, she's, a, she's a magical girl in the simplest magical girl uniform ever she, created. She is the magical girl. She comes with uh, the tiara... Okay, the scepter. She comes with the moonstick, with and without the, the silver crystal. Ooh. She comes with Luna the cat. Yeah. She comes with like a... No- the thing I was most impressed about was she comes with every single hand position that you see her do in her opening speech. Oh, cool. So you know, like, I don't know if you guys remember how the speech goes, but... She does about a billion hand gestures, and she yeah. comes with all of them. Oh, cool. So you can do... If wow! You, so if you liked one specific part of that speech, you can display her that way, and it, it it's it's kind of nuts. Um, she comes with a total of four faces, but she also comes with two extra faces if you got in on the first edition bonus. Yeah, and wow. the two the two bonus faces are it sucks because they're the faces that I think were the ones that should have always been included. That's her winking face and her crying face. Interesting. So. Uh, the other thing too is she is hella expensive. There hasn't been Sailor Moon toys, or or availability for Sailor Moon stuff is just not there. Um, and so a lot of people are just speculating. Bandai had to pay a fuck ton of cash to get the license to do this. That's why she's almost forty five bucks. Right. And and for forty five bucks, if I had to be completely objective, she's not exactly worth forty five bucks. Um. There are better toys out there. But to be subjective. But yeah, I mean, this is Sailor Moon, and like, if there was three characters from the 90s that I had to pick out that were the most influential, it would be Sailor Moon, the Green Ranger, and Kid Goku with the Power Pole and Nimbus. That's Tail and everything? Yeah, that, that's what I think is the most, the, the, the trio of iconic 90s characters. Uh, maybe Ash Ketchum, but I think more Pikachu, but whatever. But uh, yeah, so she's cool. Uh... Now, would I suggest you guys go buy her? I, my, my gut instinct is to say no unless you're a diehard fan. But mm-hmm. the problem with the whole first edition bonus thing is, is like down the line, mm-hmm. if you miss out on that, that's going to be something you're going to want. And that's how they kind of... It kind of sucks too because they, they charge it really expensive. So it's like, well, if you want it, you better buy it now. Mm-hmm. But if you don't and you wait... Because I have no doubt this figure will be around for years to come. There'll be re- reissues and re-releases... But the thing is, it won't have that first edition crap, and then you'll be like, fuck, I wish I got the first edition crap. Um, Come with second edition crap. There's no such thing as second edition crap. And and this kind of makes me worry for what they're going to do with the other Sailor Scouts. Like, is Mercury's computer advisor going to be a first edition bonus? You know, is is Mars's tarot, not tarot, sorry, her, uh, her paper things, you know? Flash paper? Yeah, like, will that all be first edition stuff? And that's kind of... mean the seals? Yeah. Yeah, the seals. Like, will they all be first edition stuff? And that's kind of disappointing. Um, But the figure's whole is cool. The one thing that's worth noting is she does come with a display stand, and it's in the shape of a heart. 
cool. And cool. Uh, it even says Sailor Moon, and it's one of those coolest, it's the coolest display stand out there, uh, because most of these display stands are just square, and they print something on, but here they went with a heart, and I thought that was neat, and I kind of hope that the other Sailor Scouts have special shapes. Mm. Uh, but yeah, she's neat. Her hair's cool, too. It's all clear, and then yeah. they airbrushed yellow and orange over it, so in certain lighting, it looks like it's glowing, like she's Super Saiyan. That's but... cute. Wow, that's a really cool figure, dude. Yeah, so she's, um... I'm a little disappointed she doesn't come with, like, a super bitched-out face, like, I'm a bitch and I hate you. Like, Did that she ever have that face? No. Yeah. But, like... That, that's a Mars face. I know, but the thing is, like, all my female characters, I always put on the bitchiest face they have. And that's, how I, that's how I like them displayed. Like, get the fuck out of here, like, I'm too good for you. That's a Jupiter face. Um, but yeah, no, Sailor Moon, really cool. If you want more info, my review just went up as this recording started, so there you are. Uh, that is going to do it for the show. Uh, also, just to let you guys know, uh, you can also pose the Sand Trooper like Jehu T and make his feet pointy. <laughs> <laughs> he does look like Jehu T. He needs some wings. Man, is there a Sand Trooper with like a cloak? Or like wings? Done! Yo, I want a Sand Trooper with laser spam. Okay, just let you guys know, cannon. this is not the end of the show. I have something to do with you guys. Today. I was going to say, like, is Blavin going to surprise us with a quiz? What's he going to do with Oh, me? I got one. I'm trying to do something for every week. Yo, that's that's exciting. I like this enthusiasm. Yeah? I like this. Am, uh, I, the new, am I the new good co-host? Uh, no, you guys are still on e- even terms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being the best. Listen, yeah, as your boss, I can't play favorites. That would be very unmoral of me to do. <laughs> unmoral? Something like that. But That's the word, right? Immoral. Immoral. Immoral, yeah. But I'm, but I'm always trying to improve the show, and this guy just wants us to cede your position. You're right. But you know, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> We've established that because I am the boss, uh, we are the Transformers. I am Megatron. You are Soundwave. Good, good. Anthony is Starscream, and TJ is Shockwave. <laughs> what does Shockwave do? Shockwave's actually the, the for it. Shockwave's actually the secret... Second in command, because he's a uh, he leaves all of Cybertron to Shockwave, Shockwave. <laughs> and he says, "Shockwave, you're in charge. Run Cybertron for four million years." Oh, he's guy. That's it. Yeah, yeah, he does. Uh, Soundwave just just is intrinsically loyal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Starscream always wants to whatever. Yeah. But Megatron keeps Starscream around. You know why? Why? Because he has heart. He has <laughs> always trying. He's always trying. He's the only one with motivation. And, so, and Megatron's like, I like that. There's a little bit of evil in you, and that's why you deserve to be one of the leaders. I'll take it over. It'll, uh, it'll be mine soon enough. <laughs> it will. And then, <laughs> and then he's going to get an upgrade in the blast. Exactly. Guy. And then... <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, let's all come over to my house, record the podcast on my laptop, and you're going to be like, yo, I got a mixing board and microphones. I'm like, no! It's like, I can kill you because I already cloned you. <laughs> That's pretty much how it happens. Yeah, Megatron dies, Starscream takes over, he even gets a crown and a cape, and then Megatron comes back with upgrades. It's like, fuck you, he blows them to smithereens, and Starscream's history is just done forever. That's it for him. Yeah, that's it. They just kill him off like that. And he gets the cool cape, too. Yeah. He even gets toys with him so in the cape. So he gets the cape and the crown for, like, five seconds, and then Megatron's like, what up, bitch? Five <laughs> seconds? Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure in the movie it was, like, very short-lived. Movie. Yeah. Like, he goes through the whole coronation process, and then... Megatron comes back and fucks oh, Galvatron his shit up. Yeah, he, he yeah. comes back and he fucks his shit up. Did he just transform into the cannon and blast him? Yeah, he's like... Is that what he does? That's what he does. Or does he just shoot him with the big cannon? No, he flies in and he's like... He has some sort of like quick speech. Yeah. He turns into the, the tripod cannon and he blows Starscream up. <laughs> and then Starscream's never seen again until his like little stint in Beast, Beast Wars, Wars where he becomes Waspinator. Waspinator. <laughs> so I become the coolest character in Beast Wars. The thing was is that when he became Waspinator, everybody kind of was like, taken aback by how cool he was. He was such a badass, wasn't he? <laughs> and then when he turned back to normal, they're like, oh, it's Wasp. And then Megatron from Beast Wars is like, what the fuck is this shit? And he blows him up again. <laughs> now come back stronger. Stronger than before. And then he's gone. His spark just flies around, right? Yeah, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So... What I want to do with everyone today is a crack a pack of Magic 2014. Uh-oh. So what's going to happen is that I'm going to read the cards, and you're going to tell me if you were in a draft, what would be your first pick. Ooh. Ooh. I'm doing the artificial <laughs> new pack. Of artificial cards. noise for packs. I want to tell you guys that he's actually opened up a pack of cards, but he isn't. What? Yeah. Um, take out Landon Token. Yeah, yeah, I got it. But I like picking those ones. So the first one we've got is... 
Festering mute. Wait, hold on. What are we? What are we gonna do here? If you're in a draft, what would your first pick? Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Festering mute. One black mana. Yeah. Or one one. Yeah. When Festering mute dies, target creature and opponent control gets minus one minus one until end of turn. That creature gets minus four minus four instead. If you control a creature named Bog Brew Witch. Oh. Okay. The next one is two colorless and a white. For the Master of Diversion. It's two it's a two two creature. Whenever Master of Diversion attacks, top target creature defending player controls. Alright, the next one is Time Ebb. Two colorless and a blue for a sorcery. And it says put target creature on top of its owner's library. Hmm. Next one, Smelt. One red mana for an instant. Destroy target artifacts. Oh, thank you. Next one, Rootwalla. Two, in, two colorless and a green. A lot of three drops. For a creature lizard, that's a 2-2. Two, two, and it uh, has an ability. It says one and a green. Rootwalla gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Activate this ability only once per turn. Ooh. Ooh. Next one, Sensory Deprivation. One blue mana. Enchantment Aura. Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature gets minus 3, minus 0. Uh. Auromancer. 2 colorless and a white. For a 2-2, two, two, Creature Human Wizard. Whenever Auromancer enters the battlefield, you may return target enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. Spore Mound. 3 colorless mana and double green for a total cost of 5. For a Creature Fungus. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1 1 green sapperling creature token onto the battlefield. And it's a 3 3. Alright, this is the last common Death Gaze Cockatrice. 2 colorless mana and double black for a total of 4. For a creature cockatrice, it has flying and death touch, and it's a 2 2. And those are all the commons. <clears throat> Spell Blast is your first uncommon. It's X mana and. X colorless mana in a blue. For an instant, counter target spell with a converted mana cost of X. Hmm. Next up is a gnawing zombie. So it's one mana colorless mana in a black. For a creature zombie with a power and toughness of one and three. So it's a one power, three toughness. You can pay one in a black to sacrifice a creature, and target player loses one life and you gain one life. And the next uncommon is Battle Sliver. Four colorless mana and a red for a creature sliver. Sliver creatures you control get plus two, plus O. Oh, and it's a 3-3. Three, three. So when he comes into play, he's a sliver too, so he's basically a 5-3. Alright, you gotta, you, we have a foil uncommon. It's called Shiv's Embrace. It's two colorless mana and a red and a red for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two plus two and has flying, and you can has the ability that you can pay one red as many times as you want to give, have enchanted creature get plus one plus zero oh until end of turn. Mm. And your rare boys and girls is silence, one white mana for an instant. Your opponent cannot cast spells this turn. Mm. So, what do you guys think? Let me see. Let me see the, the cards yeah. again. I know Anthony and. TJ are, are a little more familiar with it, so... Yeah, uh, these these are all new to me, yeah. so... Um, yeah. <clears throat> we'll a little Jeopardy break, and you guys can think about what you guys think is your pick. I have mine. Do, 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 do. No, we're going to get sued for that, yeah. No, so what we're going to do is... I'm going to use the magic of editing. So our decisions have been made. Yep. Um, I'll go first. Why sure. Why the hell go ahead, do it. Uh, I picked something that was, I believe, uh, green. Okay. And had something to do with lands. Spore Mound? I think that's what I picked. Is it Spore Mound? That's what I picked. All right, all right. Um, what were your choices between? You said you had a few choices. It was that one, the the very, very... Uh, the, the... Is it the... Sliver dude? Oh, the sliver dude? Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. The sliver yeah, yeah. dude and yeah. the. I really wanted to pick one of like you can't the the instant counter spells. I'm like that's like a one time use thing. Is that really useful? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I don't know. That one's tough to cast. Yeah, yeah. So you picked Spore Man. Sure. Okay, you Anthony. I picked Silence. Ah, Silence. Right on. That one T is the 
pay rare. one white, and then uh, players opponent. can't cast spells this turn. Your opponent can't cast. Oh spells. yeah, that's the last one, right? Yeah. It's the rare. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Rare. And you, TJ? I chose. Yeah, Did you really? Yeah. That's oh. the first one. Oh damn! No, it's uh, the last common. It was the two black black for the two two flying death touch. Flying death touch. I saw that. I, yeah. That's what I thought would be cool too, but I'm like, uh, I don't know if that's useful. Yeah. I'm picking Shiv's embrace. The two red red for the enchantment that make gives a plus two plus two flying and fire breathing. Yeah. Cause yeah, it turns your two two into a dragon. <laughs> they can't stop the dragon. You win. <laughs> so that's, that's why I picked that one. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, good, good stuff, good stuff. So what, I'd like to know why you guys thought your picks was like that. So what made you pick Spawnman? Oh, I picked Spawnman because um, because I figure if you get that early, and you're always throwing down lands, you know it's five, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know what? That's mid game support. It is. It is. It is. And uh, you can show up the ground pretty well. Yeah, and that's how I usually play. I I can't win fast right so you build up it's interesting because green is the best color unanimously voted in this set yeah yeah how about you anthony why'd you pick silence because i like the idea of just the my opponent not having a turn so you just wanted the blank a turn yeah so it's like i swing in for like whatever and but yeah. they have no defenders yeah. it's like you don't have defenders this turn either boom what about what if you don't have a board state then i want to use it what? Then I wouldn't use it. Or what? I could use it defensively and be like, it gives me more time to make a board state. It gives me like an extra turn. Kind of like a fog? Mm, well, not even a fog. It's like more useful than a fog. Yeah? Because they can't play anything. Right. But what's stopping them from playing it next turn? That's what's scary. That's why I didn't pick it, because I'm like, that is just such a one-time use specific scenario card. I like it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just like, that's just not my, my play style. Yeah. A lot of people want to live the dream and recast it over and over again with uh, another card which can copy it. Oh. But yeah. No, I wasn't even thinking of that. I just, I just like blank in a whole turn. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Yeah, it has a specific use. That's if you're winning, it'll close the game. But if you're losing, it won't pull you back. Mm -hmm. Because even if... Because if you think about it, you're playing it on their turn. You're, you're counting on the next draw step to save you, right? Mm-hmm. But they get that draw step and another draw step after that. So I you get you play it on their turn, on their upkeep they draw. They can't play anything. You pass turn you do draw. Mm -hmm. Let's say you got stabilized. Then it's their turn. They get to draw another card, mm -hmm. right? So they get two draw steps and you get the one to try and save yourself if they're ahead and you're behind. Mm. Yeah. See the weakness with my pick is that it's an enchantment. So. If this was my first pick bomb, and if I attach it on a 2-2 and they shock it, I just lost two cards and my bomb, and I lost it. What about you, TJ? Why'd you pick the Death Case Crocatrice? Because it's going to be flying and death touch. Yeah. I saw the death touch, and I knew that's what you'd pick. Did you like, think about yeah. what, that it's four, though? What? That it's four mana? Yeah. It's super up there. I know. It's shoring up the game. It was either that or... <laughs> What's that white one? It's like... Yeah. Two and a white, and it's two two creature, and every time you Ah, uh, yeah, the master diversion. Uh, yeah, so that's for an aggressive white deck. Yeah. Yeah, that's good though. That's good. There's a lot of <laughs> you guys. You you notice that I'm saying more negative than good in this set because this set is pretty bad. <laughs> this set has a lot of <laughs> this set has a lot of jank cards. <laughs> Just to let you know right now, this pack was absolutely horrendous. I was gonna say like yeah, this, this is uh... this doesn't sound very strong, right? Because it's not. It's terrible. Yeah, because I was looking through this. Because like... literally all our uncommons are pretty jank, and our rare isn't the strongest that it could be. It's not a planeswalker. It's not any of those things that can yeah. close out a game. Like even our even the battle sliver that's still six mana yeah, or yeah. five mana five. to get there. And if you don't have slivers, then you're just paying. Yeah, it's fine. Five mana for a five three, but. Yeah, this is this pack was not very exciting. So, basically, anything that you pick would have had something bad along. With, is never a good. Yeah. This is a terrible pack to open. I'm glad I opened this pack here, so I don't have to bring it when I bring it to drafting tomorrow. So I don't get the shit pack this right here, because I'd be really upset to open this pack. Is this one of the packs you won? No, this is just a pack I bought today. Oh, okay. Yeah. So another cool card here is Time Ebb, two in the blue. Put target creature on top of its owner's library. It just I saw that too and I'm like 
could be cool in a specific scenario. That's 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 what you gotta think about. If if they're killing you already, this is not gonna help. That's why. Like, <laughs> there's all these cards that are just like, oh, that'd be awesome in a one-time instance. But then, like, yeah. how am I gonna so build off of that? The only good thing about this card is on turn three, you do it and you get that tempo hit, and they don't they have to draw it next turn while you're still advancing your board state. <sighs> but once the board state's set and settled. Good luck. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter if they draw it again if they're beating you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another possible pick is a Root Walla. It's two and a green mm -hmm. for the 2-2. Two, two, and you play one and a green for... Uh, oh, gets yeah. plus two, plus two. Uh, a good thing about this card, especially, is that it just... It's not that it can turn into a 4-4. Four, four, it's that it has the threat of turning into a 4-4. Four, four. Uh -huh. Every time I mat watch a match with Root Walla, it always goes unblocked. Okay, oh, because because sure. you're so scared yeah. of getting just annihilated by a four four. Yeah, especially but, if they have open mana. You're yeah, just like, so you attack in, they block. Like sweet, take two, boom! I get to play something else. They're like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> uh, smelt is just destroy target artifact. Yeah, let's, let's not go there. Um, aura mancer, kind of, return an aura. You kind of need to have auras already for it to be useful. Yep. Sensory deprivation, one blue mana to get minus three, minus O. Oh. It's not bad, but boy, if I had it as a Perth pick, I'm really, really aching for cards. <laughs> uh, Gnawing Zombie, the one in the black for one black sacrifice creature, target player lose one and gain one life. So apparently, the really strong deck in this set is red black sacrifice. So what they do is steal your stuff and sacrifice it so you don't get it back. Mm. So they steal it for a turn, they attack with their team and your guy along with them, and then they sack it. So apparently that's a really, really strong archetype. But And this is one of the few sacrifice outlets you can get. But again, you have to plan around and build around it. Overall, you guys picked really well for a really bad pack because this pack was absolute jank. If one of you guys picked Smelt, I will slap the shit out of you. <laughs> one, one, one red panda for destroy target artifact. Oh, I would have been like, Jesus Christ, really? <laughs> if you pick Festering you, I would have been like, what's wrong with you? Go for one, the combo, son. Yo, go for the combo? What if it never shows up? Uh-oh, your first pick was a Festering Oh, you. no. Oh, shit. Yeah. So I can see the different play styles. Anthony's going for control. Of course, TJ's going for aggro. Of course. And uh, for some reason, Vince is going mid-range. <laughs> I don't got nothing until turn five. <laughs> I love how Mr. All or Nothing is, no, no, I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to show up the ground. Let's see where this goes. <laughs> yeah. It's good stuff, guys. Good, good. Yeah, so that's our little crack of hack. Sweet. Maybe we'll do another one for Theros when it comes out. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I know Vince will just pick the monsters. TJ will just pick the heroes. Yeah. And then Anthony will pick the Centaur Hedonist. The what? <laughs> the Centaur Hedonist. That's one of the cards. It's just a centaur lying on the ground in the ground. And you can it's a it's a two mana for a one two or something like that. And you can pay run red, one red mana to sacrifice it and gain three red mana. And his flavor text is any party you can walk away from is not a party worth going to. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you know we're hedonism bot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like, regret nothing. <laughs> so he's like that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's the crack of pack. Probably gonna toss these cards. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, because they're worth nothing. Oh, no, you mean silence? Yeah, not even silence. Oh, well. Well, there you go. We hope you enjoyed this week's installment of Three Nerds in a Basement. Oh. We uh, read a comic. We oh, yeah. talked about some video games. We cracked we, some packs. We literally looked at some cards and played some toys. Ah. It was uh, an episode full of surprises. For the ages. <laughs> For the ages. And we hope to be able to bring you more of these in the days to come. In the near future. Yes. So thanks for listening, and until next week, this has been myself, Flavin, Anthony, and we are the Three Nerds of the Basement, and we will see you next time.